Hi, my name is Sarita Echavez-C, and I am an Associate Professor of Media and Cultural Studies at the University of California, Riverside. I'm also the co-founder and executive director of the web-based nonprofit organization called the Center for Art and Thought. As for the first question about the um, ideal relationship, mentorship relationship in academia today, I have to say that I think that the ideal mentorship relationship is for there to be no mentorship relationship. And that has to do with the fact that um, because the university is such a hierarchical system wherein the accrual of more and more power and more stability um, seems to be accompanied by a lack of accountability, the mentorship relationship as I see it today tends to reinforce um, rather than challenge that very, very hierarchical uh, system. That said, um, for me, um, the ideal uh, advisor, IV, advisee relationship has to do with um, the acknowledgement or the very frank um, discussion of what the student's ideal work-life scenario is after, would be after gra graduation, a discussion that ideally would happen really early on in uh, the student's um, studies when it's still life sta uh, low stakes. Um, when the, before the student has, for example, taken the qualifying field exams, um, definitely before the defense, so that um, both the advisor and advisee can start to work toward making that ideal work-life scenario um, um, a, a possibility and a reality um, uh, from very early on. The ideal advisor advisee relationship to me also um, is a constant um, or at least a regular conversation about the student's pedagogical uh, experience um, as well as philosophy. And um, I think that's important because when students are um, reminded um, and can talk about their experiences as teachers, that's typically very empowering. For the student, it's a reminder to, um, it's, it's very empowering for the advisee. It's a reminder, a, a, an important reminder, I think, to the advisor that the student is also always a, a teacher and that that is part of graduate training. Um, finally, in terms of the second question about um, the responsibility I have in my position in terms um, of uh, um, uh, creating greater vistas for non-academic opportunities and the acqu acquisition of skill set. Um, that's precisely why uh, several years ago, when I was very, very frustrated with mainstream academia and mainstream and the mainstream art world, when I saw, you know, scholar after scholar, student after student, who I thought was doing some of the most interesting and cutting edge work, get um, discouraged or um, uh, or even expelled from academia. Um, that's why I founded uh, the Center for Art and Thought, which is a web-based nonprofit organization that creates juxtapositions and hopefully productive um, interchanges between scholarly and creative workers, between uh, scholars and um, artists, um, especially from a um, Philippine-centric point of view. So um, in with when founding the Center for Art and Thought, CAT, um, I've found um, that PhDs actually have um, amazing skill sets, uh, which have to do with their curiosity, their independence. You can give a PhD or a PhD student a task and um, they will very independently uh, figure out the resources that they need, figure out how to use, manage um, their resources. And they have, um, because of that kind of combination of uh, curiosity and doggedness, um, can deliver um, real quality um, and depth of knowledge. And I think so, so part of, I guess, um, what I feel my role is, is to actually um, explicitly identify and make visible the kinds of skill sets that uh, PhD students 
um, do acquire and can translate um, to um, other fields outside of academia. All right, that's it. Bye.